Okay, so here's our powertrain, battery, and all the wiring harness has now been reconnected. So we're ready to bench test this sucker. Everything's ready to go. There's um, the only difference is going to be we don't have any cooling in the cooling system for the for the motor, the inverter, and the charger. But other than that, everything is here that I believe we need to make the uh, car operate on the bench here, obviously. And so the only thing we have to to uh, to connect is our 12 volt battery, which is right here. We're going to do that last. That will boot up the system. But I'll just show you a little bit of the details here as I go through some of this. Um, show you some of the, the details and everything. So as you can see, everything is reconnected, powertrain-wise. Now there's lots of things that are not connected. Obviously, we got a whole lot of stuff that's not connected. So, um, like anything to do with the uh, headlights, the door panel, anything on the door, uh, wiring the mirrors, the power windows, the headlights, taillights, all that kind of stuff's not connected. Here's our control module here for the uh, park reverse neutral drive. Our charging port's connected. If it's successful, we'll go ahead and charge it up too, just to see if it works. But stuff like this is, see, one of the big interesting things about this is that, you know, how much can we get away with here? So, I mean, I want to know, can we get away without the eight, you know, the um, airbag sensors and the, and the uh, safety belt sensors, you know, this is a right rear tail light, just a whole right rear cluster here. The TPS, TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system. Wiring. If we could do away with all that stuff, because I don't really want any of this. I don't need any of this stuff to carry over. I just want the, the basics. I want the motor, the battery, um, and anything it ta anything it takes to operate the car. Basically, I don't care about any of the other stuff. So, so our accelerator pedal right here. We've got our um, everything up on the dash right here. So we have our key ignition. We've got our display here. We've got our charging indicator state of charge um, what else do we got here so so I've, I've gone so far as to plug in the electric braking system here now we're not going to be able to use any of this at least I don't see it happening anytime soon because it's just too elaborate it's too going to be too difficult I have a braking system already in the other car it works fine all I really need to do is get a vacuum a source to, to run the power booster and that's basically it's good to go so I really don't really want to mess around with with trying to integrate this whole electric uh, system in here but I have bothered to plug it back in and everything because I may as well and we'll see if it if it makes any difference I mean eventually we'll if it does boot up today we don't have any problems I'll go ahead and disconnect this and see if it you know throws a bunch of codes or whatever if um, one way or the other we should be able to um, Either just possibly leave these connected and just take these modules. Maybe they just go in the car and they just sit there, you know, maybe just as a just to keep the computer happy But not to actually be used. That's a possibility. And then of course all of these things go to the um, To our brake actual brake booster right here, which is right here But what's interesting about this is there's a wire going in here. I'm hoping that this is what we need Just maybe this is the actual brake sensor wire that maybe all this other stuff is just to control you know the ABS and all the other stuff and hopefully hopefully this little sensor right here is all we need because this is the actual only thing that's really actually mechanical so this is our brake this is where the brake um, pedal goes to so it actually pushes in right here so hopefully we can keep just this portion of it and maybe use a lever or something for our regen braking or just some sort of apparatus to uh, to get that to work because we definitely want our regen braking to work and plus for the, in order for the car to get into drive, it ha you have to be able to push on the brake pedal. So it has to get some sort of signal. Now, we may be able to just have a switch or something, or just some sort of like toggle switch or something. Maybe just a, you know, a little switch behind the steering wheel or something. Maybe that's our regen braking. Maybe like a behind the, behind the wheel paddle shifter kind of, you know, regen braking type of thing. And then I've also, um, what I have here is I have the wiring. Um, so all of the, the grounds are going back here. Have a lot of series of jumper wires going back to our 
to our battery here, which is also um, grounded to our project car, which is adjacent here, which I've already removed the engine and I've already got that basically ready for this powertrain. So it's literally going to the car it's going to be going into. It's grounding to the car that's going to be going into. So, so literally, if this works today, we'll have everything we need. We know everything's going to going to function because it's uh, everything's right in front of us. So that's pretty much it here. So let's go ahead and uh, plug in that 12 volt and see what happens here. Just connected the 12 volt battery. I think I heard something, but um, nothing has blown up yet. I'm still alive, so that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, turn the key on, see what happens. Let me try putting the uh, brake pedal on here, see if that does anything. Okay, I'm pushing on it right now. Let's try to re let's try to reboot this and see what happens. Nah, not ready. Of course it's not ready. How could it possibly be ready? So that's what we're getting here right now. <laughs> yeah, I imagine we have a few lights on here. How could you ever imagine that not being true? Let's try uh, the brake light, see if that does anything. Oh, that doesn't even do anything. Huh. So much for that, that didn't do anything. Must not be connected. The handbrake light, that should have turned off the brake light at least. Oh, goodness gracious. So yeah, lots of error messages, lots of stuff not even showing up here. Let's see if we can... We do have power though, of course. Now one of the problems with this is that we don't have any kind of way to... Yeah, it doesn't say the uh, state of charge though, if you notice on the battery. We don't have any way to, I don't have the uh, the column, you know, the trip, the trip, uh, that little button on the end of the, the sw to switch our menu. So we don't, I don't have that connected. It's gonna be a kind of a pain to track that down too, so that would be a problem. All kinds of issues, I'm sure. Okay, so that's what happens when we boot it up here. See, this doesn't even have any... We're connected, but it's, um, there's no illumination on it or anything. So that leads me to believe it's not connected. This is a module right here, so it goes into there. Huh. Okay, so I plugged in the blue and me device right here to get our Bluetooth up and running. So, and then I plugged in our OBD2 port here, our, our, our connector here. So, looks like we've got Alpha OBD up and running here. So, um, interesting. So, this is going to tell us everything that we probably already know. For example, we know nothing's working. Obviously, nothing's working. <laughs> Connected to the pin six and four of the interface. Connect the yellow adapter set. Let's just see what's going on here. Well, we already know we're not getting any battery battery indication here on the display. There's nothing that shows the battery, so it's like the battery's not even connected. And yet it is. So Possibly check those wires again here. Can error. Connection failed. Let me zoom in on that. Um, there was a loose cable down here. I kind of nudged it in place. It made a, a clicking sound like something was happening, but um, didn't make any difference on our display here. Still giving us the same error messages. Just lights all over the place. And then as far as the OBD2 uh, or the Alpha OBD it's, uh, yeah, it's just not connecting to anything. I mean, I was able to get it connected to the Bluetooth when I plugged in the Bluetooth module here. 
I also tried plugging in the telematics, thinking that I might do something. I mean, that's just an extra box I got lying around. But um, yeah, none of this is making any difference. I don't think it's going to matter because um, I it's just I think just being a CAN bus based system, everything is it's, it's basically an you know every the CPU is basically controlling a whole car here. It's not just a motor; it's controlling everything. So, and with half the stuff, you know, even though it's not related to the powertrain. With all this stuff not connected to anything, I really think it's just not very happy. I really think it just tells the computer that there's just, you know, the car's not even here. Half of it's not here because it's not connected to anything. So I think that's our problem here. So it's okay, though. Um, plan A was to do to try to use our wiring harness, and that was a great fantasy uh, notion there. But it's turning out to be just that, more of a fantasy but that's okay because uh, plan B, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves an aftermarket controller and we're going to utilize our, our, our parts that we do have. We have a nice battery pack here. We've got a nice Bosch powertrain. We've got a nice E-Drive transmission here. We've got the inverter. We've got the controller or charger, I mean. And then we've got the uh, nice accelerator pedal and probably a few other bits and pieces. But um, just for that alone, we have most of what we need to make a... Well, we have a nice cord here for our charger. We'll carry that over. So we have all kinds of good stuff here. It's just um, we're not going to be able to just simply put it, put it back together, at least not in, uh, without connecting everything. I guess we could probably use this if we can figure out what wires we need. It's funny that there's so many wires. You think there'd only be like one, two, three, four different or maybe five different wires. But of course, there's probably like 25 wires going in there. Why that's necessary, I don't know, but but so the nice thing about using an aftermarket controller is that it will be just a purpose-built product. So it will be just just to power the car. Like it will be only about you know putting it in the park, putting it into drive, regen braking, and then off. That's like the four positions it's going to have. It's not going to it's not going to care about all this other crap. It's not going to care about you know if the tail lights are on or if the airbags are plugged in or. It's not going to care about any of that other junk. It's going to care just about one thing and one thing only. So looking forward to that. That way I don't have to deal with this freaking wiring harness from hell. This is pretty much what it's been. Just taking the time to put this back together has been a pain. But anyway, so one door closes and another door opens. And I'm still looking forward to the future here. I think this is going to be a wonderful um, series of videos to come on our EV project. But this is going to be the last video of the teardown series since we are now done with this. There's nothing else to tear down. With the exception of one more video, there will be the, the battery teardown video. That's coming up next. But otherwise, that's going to do it. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys found this series useful and helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did. And many, many more videos to come.